that CD-ROM I just saw one drop down now. Whatever comes in the waste, we cannot convert to paper. But how does all this scrumpled rubbish get turned into clean, crisp white paper? Get ready for the biggest mashing machine in the world. Recycling newspapers involves some of the hottest, wettest and most extreme machine environments in modern industry. First stop, these giant cylinders. They churn the paper in boiling water until it becomes a broken, sodden mass. The aim, to break down the fibres that knit paper together. The end result is this. Hot, sludgy pulp. When it's fully pulped, the sludge is pumped next door to spend a little time in a room the size of a football field. It's known as the fibre preparation plant. The purpose of all this machinery is to wash the pulp in a high-strength soap to remove the ink and glue. This is the pulp's final destination. A gigantic paper maker, 90 metres long and 30 metres high. This monster machine costs over £100 million to build and it's the biggest of its kind in the world. Uh, the machine operates at just over 60 mile an hour or 1680 metres a minute in paper making terms. Before the pulp enters the paper maker, it passes through a kind of giant washing machine. 100 tonnes of water agitate every tonne of pulp to help knit the paper fibres back together. At this point, the pulp is still more water than paper. The next stage is to drain and steam the knitted pulp and pass it through giant rollers. In 24 hours, the roller produces enough paper to stretch from London to Athens, a distance of over 2,400 kilometres. Shipping the finished reels of newsprint out is as big a job as shipping the waste paper in. Straight into the back of waiting trucks. The plain paper reels in the back of this truck are about to get turned into tomorrow's news. But how do they do it? News International is one of Britain's biggest printing operations. It produces four titles and up to 31 million newspapers and magazines a week. These guys are called Automatic Guided Vehicles, or AGVs for short. Think of them as R2-D2's great-great-granddaddy. They move around a pre-programmed route delivering newsprint to the insatiable printing presses. Newsprint comes into docking stations or wheel stands directly beneath the press itself. On the leading edge of the reel, there's a connector called a kite. The operator hooks the kite to a chain that will pull the reel right into the press through a forest of rollers that wind it into a complex pattern called the web. The operation looks simple, it isn't. Getting the web's tension right is crucial. If it's too slack, what you'll find is the web will wander and will cause us uh, anything like a jam. We could have jam up or a web break. 
or if, again, the paper's too tight, it just snaps straight out on us. So we need to keep it balanced. In another part of the building, the noise level is lower, but deadlines are tight and the business is pressured. This is the plate room. Here, the page layouts are formatted in a way the presses can read. The layouts come in as computer files. Giant laser scanners etch a faithful copy of the layouts onto aluminium plates. But here's the catch. For a full-colour newspaper, you need five plates for each page. And that means creating an awful lot of plates. Generally, we make over 4,000 plates a night. And if the plates were to get mixed up... It'd be one great big mess. As the plates are loaded onto the presses, another part of the printer's dark art is revealed. Plates don't print directly onto the page. Instead, they print onto another cylinder, and it's this second cylinder that does the business. As the city gets ready to go to bed, the printers go to work. The presses run at high speed. They get through a 16-kilometre long reel of newsprint every 20 minutes, and that means feeding fresh reels into the presses on the run. So, how do they do it? Like a relay race, as one reel is running out, a second reel is starting to spin. At the last moment, a splicer cuts the outgoing reel and gums it onto the front of the new reel. So fast, you can barely see it. Without so much as a twitch, the presses keep rolling. So far, the presses are printing onto a single roll. But this machine funnels the reel down towards a blade that cuts and folds the page into this. A row of neatly folded newspapers. Each newspaper now finds itself on an intricate switchback called a gripper conveyor. You might think they'd be headed for the dispatch bay, but you'd be wrong. Have you ever wondered how the sports section, the comics, the fashion supplements all get inserted into the main body of the newspaper? It's a job so big and so fast it could never be done by hand. Instead, machines do it with incredible precision. The supplements have been printed and stored on giant two and a half metre diameter drums. The main newspaper, the so-called live copy, heads along the conveyor towards a machine called an insertion bin. The drum begins unfolding the supplements. At just the right moment, the two meet. A robotic arm literally slides the supplement into the newspaper, so precisely that a particular page number can be chosen as the point of entry. It's a roller coaster ride for newspapers. It's now almost time for the morning edition to hit the streets. The papers are stacked and bundled 25 at a time, loaded into trucks and shipped out. The night's work is almost at an end. Come the morning and the daily news is in someone's hand. Strange to think that in a few short hours this newspaper's journey will begin all over again. Five ordinary objects, five extraordinary stories. Every product has taken a journey to where it is either made, sold or bought. And for most objects in our global economy, at some point, that journey will have been by sea. Coming up, ports. Next, on How Do They Do It?
over 90% of world trade is carried by ships. Cargo shipping is what makes the global modern economy work, but most of us will never see how it's done. Hong Kong is the busiest port in the world. It handles a staggering 22 million heavy steel containers a year. Exports must be unloaded from lorries and trains, stored and then loaded onto the correct ships. Imports must do the same in reverse. It's like baggage handling on a nightmare scale with really heavy bags. So, how do they do it? Hong Kong is small. 100 years ago, it was a humble fishing port. Space is extremely limited, so it's had to grow upwards. This lack of space is a huge problem for the port. Freight is valuable, and handling and keeping track of containers poses a huge challenge. The port is divided up into separate terminals. The largest is Hong Kong's International Terminal, or HIT. One and a half thousand workers and a high-tech computer system means that a massive cargo ship